in signaling there are various types of lamp checking relays ECRs which are DECR, HECR, RECR, UECR, shunt on ECR, shunt off ECR, calling on ECR. First we will learn about proceed aspect lamp checking relay DECR circuit. Let us take off signals for run through for down line. Thereby S1DR and S1HR picks up. Through the pickup contacts of S1DR, S1HR, its repeaters S1DPR, S1HPR, are we cut in relays, picks up at signal location. And 110 volt AC is applied to S1 DG lamp LED signal through S1 DECR coil HR DR and DPR front contacts. Thereby S1 DG lamp close and the DECR relay picks up. Through DECR front contact a green indication is provided in the S1 signal aspect on the panel. Suppose S1 DG lamp fails to glow, cascading circuit works that is through S1 DECR back contact. The S1 HG lamp glows and S1 HECR is picked up. A yellow indication is provided in the S1 signal aspect on the panel. Suppose S1 HG lamps also fails to glow. Then through the S1 HECR back contact, and S1 HR front contact the supply is applied to the S1 RG and RG lamp close. A red indication is provided in the S1 signal aspect on the panel. Now let us know about caution aspect lamp checking relay HECR circuit. Suppose S1 signal is taken off for main line, its caution aspect controlling relay HR picks up. Thereby, the caution aspect repeater or proving relay HPR at signal location picks up. Through the pickup contact of S1 HR, S1 HPR, back contact of S1 DECR and S1 HECR coil, 110 volt AC is applied to S1 HG lamp. Thereby S1 HECR picks up and corresponding indication is provided in the signal aspect on the panel. Suppose S1 HG lamps fails to glow. The cascading arrangement enables the S1 RG lamp to glow. Now let us know about on aspect lamp checking relay RECR circuit. When a signal is not taken off through the back contact of HR and RECR coil, the supply is extended to S1 RG lamp. The S1 RG lamp glows thereby S1 RECR is picked up. The corresponding indication is provided in the signal aspect on the panel. Now let us know about root lamp checking relay UECR circuit. When home signal S1 is taken off for common loop line, then the signal control relay for root S1 UGR picks up in relay room, which energizes its repeater S1 UGPR at signal location. The 110 volt AC is applied in parallel to S1 root lamps, five numbers, through the front contact of S1 UGPR and S1 UECR coil. When minimum three lamps are burning in the root, then S1 UECR picks up. Through the S1 UECR front contacts, S1 UECPR is picked up at relay room and the corresponding root indication is provided on S1 signal on the panel. For picking up of UECR, minimum three lamps out of five should glow in the root. Now let us look at shunt on ECR. When a signal is not off, the shunt 10HR 
will be in the dropped condition. Through the shunt 10 HR back contacts and shunt 10 on ECR coil, the supply is extended to shunt 10 on aspect lamp and shunt 10 pilot lamp. When both the lamps burn, the shunt 10 on ECR is picked up and the corresponding indications are provided on the shunt 10 signal on the panel. Now let us look at shunt of ECR. When shunt signal number 10, shunt 10 is taken off, the signal controlling relay shunt 10 HR picks up. Through the front contacts of shunt 10 HR, its repeater shunt 10 HPR picks up at the signal location. Through shunt 10 HR, shunt 10 HPR front contacts and shunt 10 off ECR coil, the supply is extended to shunt 10 off aspect lamp and it burns. Through HR front contact and shunt 10 off ECR coil, the supply is extended to shunt 10 pilot lamp and it burns. Then shunt 10 off ECR is picked up and the corresponding indications are provided on the shunt 10 signal on the panel. Now let us know about calling on ECR circuit. When calling on signal S1A is taken off, the calling on signal control relay S1A COHR picks up and calling on timer stick lock relay S1 ACO JSLR drops. Through the front contact of S1 ACO HR and back contact of S1 ACO JSLR, its repeater relay S1 ACO HPR is picked up at the signal location. Through the front contacts of S1 ACO HR, S1 ACO HPR and S1 ACO HECR, Coil supply is extended to calling on lamp S1ACOHG and it burns. Thereby the calling on ECR S1ACOHECR picks up and the corresponding indication is provided on the S1A calling on signal on the panel. Panel being an interface between the yard status and the station master, indications play an important role in smooth working of a train. When a route is not set, no indication is given on the panel. When a signal is taken off, the route is set and locked. Then a row of white illuminated stripe lights are displayed reflecting all the track circuits in the route including overlap. Many times the same track circuit shall be common to many routes. But the indication circuit is designed in such a way that while the route stripe lights gets illuminated for a route to which it is a path and it is not illuminated in any other situation. These white stripe lights are illuminated through the back contact of ASR and the relevant track circuit relay TPR front contacts. Let us take off signal number 1, S3 and S6 to down main line for run through. Then W2, W3, 11A, 11C, W4, W5, 13C, 13A, W6, W30, W27, 18C, 18A, W26, W25, 20A, 20C, W24, W23, W22, group white lights will be illuminated proving the following conditions. Group white light W2. Conditions proved for lighting S1 ASPR drop, 11 NWSR pickup, 1 TPR pickup. Group white light W3. Conditions proved for lighting S1 ASPR drop, 11 ATPPR pickup, 11 NWSR pickup. Group white light 11A. Conditions proved for lighting. NWKR pickup. 11ATPPR pickup.
Group White Light 11C. Conditions proved for lighting NWKR Pickup 11BTPPR Pickup. Group White Light W4. Conditions proved for lighting S1ASPR Drop 11ATPPR Pickup. Group White Light W5. Conditions proved for lighting S1ASPR Drop 13BTPPR Pickup. Group White Light 13A. Conditions proved for lighting 13 NWKR pickup 13 ATPPR pickup Group white light 13 C Conditions proved for lighting 13 NWKR pickup 13 BTPPR pickup Group white light W6 Conditions proved for lighting S1 ASPR drop 13 BTPPR pickup 13 NWSR pickup Group white light W30 Conditions proved for lighting S1 ASPR drop 13 NWSR pickup DMTPR pickup Group white light W27. Conditions proved for lighting 3 OVSPR drop 13 NWSR pickup 18 BTPPR pickup 18 NWSR pickup. Group white light 18A. Conditions proved for lighting 18 NWKR pickup, 18 ATPPR pickup. Group white light 18C. Conditions proved for lighting, 18 NWKR pickup, 18 BTPPR pickup. Group white light W26. Conditions proved for lighting, 3 OVSPR drop. 13 NWSR pickup, 18 BTPPR pickup. Group white light W25. Conditions proved for lighting. 3 OVSPR drop, 13 NWSR pickup or 3 by 4 ASPR drop, 20 ATPPR pickup. Group white light 20A. Conditions proved for lighting 20 NWKR pickup, 20 ATPPR pickup. Group white light 20C. Conditions proved for lighting 20 NWKR pickup, 20 BTPPR pickup. Group white light W24. Conditions proved for lighting 3 OVSPR drop, 13 NWSR pickup or 3 by 4 ASPR drop, 20 NWSR pickup, 20 ATPPR pickup. Group white light W23. Conditions proved for lighting, 3 OVSPR drop, 13 NWSR pickup or 3 by 4 ASPR drop. 20 NWSR pickup, shun 21 ASPR pickup, 3 by 4 TPR pickup. Group white light W22. Conditions proved for lighting down SR1 drop or S6 HR pickup, 6 TPR pickup. When the train travels over the set route, it occupies the track circuits one after the other. The moment the track circuit is occupied by the train, the white lights are extinguished and red lights are turned on through the TPR back contact. Group red light R2. Conditions proved for lighting, one TPR drop.
Group Red Light R3, conditions proved for lighting, shunt 10 ASR pickup, S26 or 27 or 28 ASPR1 pickup, shunt 23 ASPR1 pickup, 11 AT PPR2 drop. Group Red Light 11B Conditions proved for lighting 11NWKR pickup 11A TPPR drop Group Red Light R4 Conditions proved for lighting 11A TPR drop Group Red Light R5 Conditions proved for lighting 13 BT PPR2 drop Group red light 13 D Conditions proved for lighting 13 NWKR pickup 13 B TPPR2 drop Group red light R6 Conditions proved for lighting 13 RWSR drop 13B TPPR drop Group red light R30 Conditions proved for lighting DMT PR drop Group red light R27 Conditions proved for lighting 20 RWSR drop 18 RWSR drop 18 BTPPR2 drop Group red light 18D Conditions proved for lighting 18 NWKR pickup 18 BTPPR drop Group red light R26 Conditions proved for lighting 18 BTPPR2 drop Group red light R25 Conditions proved for lighting 20A TPR drop Group red light 20B Conditions proved for lighting 20NWKR pickup 20A TPPR drop Group red light R24 Conditions proved for lighting 20RWSR1 drop 20A TPPR drop Group red light R23 Conditions proved for lighting 3x4 TPR drop Group red light R22 Conditions proved for lighting 6 TPR drop When the train clears the track circuit one after the other, red lights will be extinguished and once again the white lights will be illuminated in the same sequence. Group red light R2 Conditions proved for extinguishing 1 TPR pickup Group white lights W2 Conditions proved for lighting S1 ASPR drop 11 NWSR pickup 1 TPR pickup Group red light R3 Conditions proved for extinguishing 11 ATPR pickup Group white lights W3 Conditions proved for lighting S1 ASPR drop 11 ATPPR pickup 11 NWSR pickup Group red lights 11B Conditions proved for extinguishing 11A TPPR pickup Group white lights 11A Conditions proved for lighting NWKR pickup 11A TPPR pickup Group white lights 11C Conditions proved for lighting NWKR pickup 11B TPPR pickup 
group red lights R4 conditions proved for extinguishing 11A TPPR pickup group white lights W4 conditions proved for lighting S1A SPR drop 11A TPPR pickup group red lights R5 conditions proved for extinguishing 13B TPPR pickup group white lights W5 conditions proved for lighting S1A SPR drop 13B TPPR pickup group red lights 13D conditions proved for extinguishing 13B TPPR pickup group white lights 13C conditions proved for lighting 13 NWKR pickup 13B TPPR pickup group red lights R6 conditions proved for extinguishing 13B TPPR pickup group white lights W6 conditions proved for lighting S1 ASPR drop 13B TPPR pickup 13 NWSR pickup the moment 13B TPPR is up S1 ASPR picks up and the white lights W2, W3, W4, W5 and W6 will extinguish. 11A, 11C, 13A and 13C white stripe lights remains illuminated as they show the point in the normal position. As the train clears the down mainline berthing track, DMTPR pickup, that is DMTPR back contact is broken red lights R30 will be extinguished. Group red lights R27 conditions proved for extinguishing 18B TPPR pickup group white lights W27 conditions proved for lighting 3 OVSPR drop 13 NWSR pickup 18B TPPR pickup, 18NWSR pickup, group red lights, 18D, conditions proved for extinguishing, 18B TPPR pickup, group white lights, 18C, conditions proved for lighting, 18NWKR pickup, 18B TPPR pickup group white lights 18A conditions proved for lighting 18 NWKR pickup 18A TPPR pickup group red lights R26 conditions proved for extinguishing 18B TPPR pickup group white lights W26 conditions proved for lighting 3 by 4 ASPR1 drop 18B TPPR pickup group red lights R25 conditions proved for extinguishing 20A TPPR pickup group white lights W25 conditions proved for lighting 3 by 4 ASPR drop 20A TPPR pickup group red lights 20B conditions proved for extinguishing 20A TPPR pickup group white lights 20A conditions proved for lighting 20NWKR pickup 20A TPPR pickup group white lights 20C conditions proved for lighting 20 NWKR pickup 20 B TPPR pickup group red lights R24 conditions proved for extinguishing 
20A TPPR pickup group white lights W24 conditions proved for lighting 3 by 4 ASPR drop 20 NWSR2 pickup 20A TPPR pickup group red lights R23 conditions proved for extinguishing 3 by 4 TPR pickup group white lights W23 conditions proved for lighting 3 by 4 ASPR drop 20 NWSR pickup shunt 21A SPR pickup 3 by 4 TPR pickup the moment 3 by 4 TPR is up 3 by 4 ASPR picks up and the white lights W27, W26, W25, W24, W23 will extinguish. 18A, 18C, 20A and 20C white stripe lights remains illuminated as they show the points in the normal position. As the train clears the 6T track 60 TPR picks up thereby R22 red lights will be extinguished. When a point is set and locked in normal or reverse position then two white stripe lights are used to indicate the point's position on the panel. Suppose a point number 11 is set and locked in normal then 11A and 11C white stripe lights will be lit as per the conditions below. Group white light for normal 11A. Conditions proved for lighting. 11NWKR pickup. 11ATPPR1 pickup. Group white light for normal 11C. Conditions proved for lighting. 11NWKR pickup. 11BTPPR pickup. Suppose point number 11 is set and locked in reverse then 11E and 11G white stripe lights will be lit as per the condition below. Group white light for reverse 11E conditions proved for lighting 11RWKR pickup 11ATPR pickup group white light for reverse 11G conditions proved for lighting 11RWKR pickup 11B TPR pickup flashing indication during operation the point indication remains flashing when the point is setting to either position till it is set and locked after which it becomes steady the point operation command is extended to point location only after the point indication relays NWKR, RWKR, NWKPRs, RWKPRs NWSRs and RWSRs are dropped. Therefore, during the point operation, the white stripe lights through the back contacts of indication relays NWKR drop or RWKR drop will flash to whichever position the point is going to be set. On completion of the operation, when the point is set to normal or reverse, the indications become steady. Let us operate point number 11 to normal then 11A and 11C white stripe lights for normal indication will be flashing as the B12 flasher supply is connected as per the conditions given below. Group white light for normal operation 11A conditions proved for flashing 11NWKR drop 11RWKR drop 11 NCR pickup, 11 A TPPR1 pickup. When the point is set to normal flashing indication for normal stops as NWKR has picked up. Normal indication for point number 11 becomes steady through the pickup contact of 11 NWKR. Flashing indication when point failed to set either to normal or to reverse. When a point is operated to normal or reverse but the point does not set either in normal or in reverse, 
then the point indication remains flashing to whichever position point is operated. Let us operate point number 11 to reverse and point failed to set to reverse then reverse indications 11E and 11G will be flashing as per the conditions below. As point is not set to reverse, indication for reverse will remain in flashing. Suppose the flasher fails and gets stuck in high level, then the point failure indication will show steady instead of flashing. To detect such eventuality, flasher working indication is provided on the top center of the panel. Signal indication are prevalent in Indian Railways. These are on and off aspect are displayed on the panel. All aspects available at the signal are replicated by the corresponding color indications on the panel. In this yard, we have adapted the second method. Signal number S1. Aspects available. Stop. Red. Corresponding indication of the signal on the panel. Red. Conditions proved for the indication S1 RECR pickup. Signal number S1. Aspects available. Caution. Yellow. Corresponding indication of the signal on the panel. Yellow. Conditions proved for the indication S1 HECR pickup. Signal number S1. Aspects available. Proceed. Green. Corresponding indication of the signal on the panel, green. Conditions proved for the indication, S1 DECR pickup. Signal number S1, routing signal. Aspects available, a row of five white lights is lit when signal is off. No lights when routing signal is on. Corresponding indication of the signal on the panel, a white stripe light. Conditions proved for the indication S1 UECPR pickup. Signal number calling on signal S1A. Aspects available off aspect miniature yellow light on aspect nil. Corresponding indication of the signal on the panel yellow light. Conditions proved for the indication S1A COHECR pickup. Signal number shunt 10. Aspects available stop two horizontal lights. Corresponding indication of the signal on the panel two horizontal lights. Conditions proved for the indication on ECR pickup. Signal number shunt 10. Aspects available off two diagonal lights. Corresponding indication of the signal on the panel, two diagonal lights. Conditions proved for the indication of ECR pickup. Station master communicates to the gate man on phone to close the gate. The gate man closes the gate, locks the boom and extracts key. The gateman inserts the key in EKT and turns it clockwise to transmit control. Thereby LXR relay energizes and sticks to its own front contact. Therefore once LXR picked up, the gateman can leave the key in the EKT. Energization of LXR relay at gate lodge energizes LXCR at relay room.
due to LXCR up and LXPR in drop. Flasher supply 12 volt DC will be connected to LC closing indication LXKG and it flashes. Thereby station master comes to know that LC gate was closed by gate man. Then station master acknowledges by pressing LXN and GSRBN which results in dropping of LX22RR. The dropping of LX22RR results in dropping of LXYR. Due to LX22RR drop, LXYR drop, LXCR already in up and LX22JSLR normally a dropped relay result in energization of LXPR relay. LXPR front contact is proved in HR or DR concerned. The energization LXPR disconnects flasher supply to LXKG and connects B12 steady supply. Thereby LXKG indication becomes steady. Thereby the station master understands that LC closing operation is completed and the control is with the panel. Then suppose the station master takes off S30 signal to main line. At this juncture, if the gate man presses economizer push 22LX, the supply B24 is extended to LXR relay through the back contact of LXYPR. Since LX22RR in dropped condition, LXYR in drop, which in turn keeps LXYPR in dropped condition, further supply to lock coil is not extended as LXYPR in drop, LXR in up, so the key from EKT cannot be extracted. Now suppose the signal S30 is taken off which makes S30 ASR to drop, thereby drops LXFR. At this moment, if station master inadvertently presses LXN and GSBN button simultaneously, still LX22RR does not pick up due to S30 NRR concerned to root is in picked up condition. Hence, Slot is not extended to gate lodge, LXYPR remains in drop, thereby gateman cannot extract key from EKT. On complete arrival of a train after a signal S30 taken off, the route releases and picks up ASR thereby 22LXFR picks up. Now station master presses and releases LXN and GSBN buttons simultaneously which picks up LX22RR and sticks through its own front contact. Thereby LXPR drops. As LX22RR is in picked up condition, 22LXPR in drop and LXFR is in picked up condition. LXNR already in drop energizes 22LXYR which in turn picks up 22LXYPR at gate lodge. The moment LXYPR picks up at gate lodge, it gives out audible buzzer and lights up LC gate free indicator. LXFK. The audible buzzer alerts the gateman that slot has been extended to him for opening the gate. The gateman presses the economizer push button which cuts off supply to LXR, thereby drops LXR and mutes the buzzer and energizes the lock coil through LXYPR pickup and LXR drop contacts. Thereby gateman is enabled in extracting the key from EKT and he opens the gate. Suppose on complete arrival of train route is not released. ASR did not pick up due to one of the backlock 
track circuits failed then 22 lx fr will not pick up therefore station master presses and releases lx n and gsb n buttons simultaneously to extend slot to gate lodge which picks up lx 22 rr and drops 22 lx pr since lx fr is in drop condition 22 lx yr cannot pick up without time delay at this juncture station master presses and releases lx n button and lc gate cancellation button to pick up lx 22 js lr after 120 seconds up njpr picks up thereby 22 lx yr picks up thereby slot is extended to gate lodge by picking up of 22 lx ypr thereby gate man extracts the key and opens the gate in root locked condition a spare key for lc gate is kept in ekt without electrical lock arrangement is named as emergency key the ekt is provided inside the glass fronted box which is padlocked and sealed is kept inside the panel room when all the methods are failed to transmit slot for gate opening then station master breaks open the ceiling and opens the padlock of the box then he simply takes out the emergency key from ekt and takes it physically to the site and opens the gate once the emergency key is outside the supply to the lc gate controlling circuit lxcr is disconnected thereby lxpr cannot pick up therefore no signal can be taken off unless the key is reinserted crank handle ch has been provided for operation of motor operated points by cranking manually during a failure or maintenance the crank handle and the keys for point machine should be chained and welded to the ekt key when the key is inserted in the ekt and turned to clockwise and the station master acknowledges thereby the crank handle in indication lights up the crank handle and ekt is kept locked in a glass fronted box provided with a padlock and a seal these boxes are kept in the panel room or in location boxes specially provided for this purpose wherever crank handle is provided in the location box these will be locked and the key shall be kept in the personal custody of the station master on duty now let us understand about the crank handle zones and wards the points in the yard are grouped in different zones for maintaining the yard flexibility that is when a crank handle pertaining to a group is released for manual operation minimum interruption for traffic should occur in this yard point number 13 and 18 are grouped under ch1 if ch1 is extracted down movement signals alone are affected the upside signal can be taken for the traffic the points in the yard are divided into convenient groups and to distinguish a particular group crank handles with different wards shall be used the slots in the point machine provided to take the crank handle key would also be suitably made to take only the key applicable to that group whenever a signal to movement has to take place over the points it will not be possible to release the ch concerned which is kept locked inside an electrical key transmitter hkt or rkt or ekt when the crank handle is out it shall not be possible to 
operate the points from panel, clear any signal concerned. It shall not be possible to insert the crank handle taken out from one group in any other group point machine. When signal button GN and root button UN are pressed and released simultaneously, then root reverse relay NRR concerned picks up and drops the crank handle free relay CHFR, thereby the crank handle free indication is extinguished on the panel. At this moment, if station master presses and releases CHN and GSBN buttons to release control for crank handle extraction, the crank handle control reverse relay CHRR does not pick up, thereby CHLR remains in picked up condition. Further, if station master presses the economizer push button in the crank handle EKT box to extract the crank handle, the CHCR relay does not drop. Hence, the EKT lock coil is not energized and the crank handle key cannot be extracted. Therefore, the signals taken off remain in the same condition. When a signal is not taken off, CHFR remains in energized condition when station master presses and releases CHN and GSBN buttons simultaneously. Crank handle control reverse relay CHRR energizes and sticks through its front contact, thereby CHLR drops. When station master presses the economizer push button in the crank handle box, CHCR drops. Thereby, the lock coil is energized through the back contacts of CHLR, CHCR and front contacts of CHFR, SMPR and CHRR and the key is extracted. Hence, the signals interlocked with it cannot be taken off. The CHCR and lock coil circuits are designed in such a way that unless CHCR really drops when economizer push button is pressed, the lock coil is not energized for extraction of the crank handle. The crank handle out red indication is eliminated on the panel. The crank handle is extracted for manual operation of points during a failure or maintenance. On completion of manual point operation, the crank handle key is inserted and turned clockwise. Thereby, the contact number 1, 2 and 3, 5 will be made and crank handle in checking relay CHCR will be picked up. The crank handle is extracted for manual operation of points during a failure or maintenance. On completion of manual point operation, the crank handle key is inserted and turned clockwise. Thereby, the contact number 1, 2 and 3, 5 will be made and crank handle in checking relay CHCR will be picked up. Once the turning is over and the key is left, thereby contact numbers 3 and 5 will be broken, but the CHCR relay remains in picked up condition through stick path provided by its own front contact by passing 3 and 5 contacts. The station master presses and releases the crank handle button CHN and slot receive button. GSRBN simultaneously, then crank handle control reverse relay CHRR drops. Through the back contact of CHRR just dropped and the front contact of CHCR crank handle lock relay CHLR picks up and sticks through its own front contact.
CHLR front contact is proved in WLR or NRR. In this yard proved in NRR, UCR and HR circuits. Sidings are provided at the stations to detach a vehicle or a few vehicles from the formation and stable the same for loading or unloading or to attend to the defects noticed. Stable the tower wagon or tamping machine or ballast train etc. after the day's work has been completed. Siding points may either be operated from the cabin or panel directly, operated locally but controlled by cabin or panel. Now let us learn more about these two types of siding. Operated from the cabin or panel directly. Operation of siding points directly from the cabin or panel is, is resorted to only if the movements over these points into and out of siding are frequent. In such cases, these points are interlocked directly as done in other running points and also these sidings may be provided with shunt signals to control the movements. Operated locally but controlled by cabin or panel. Where there are no frequent movements from or to the siding, then these points are operated locally but controlled from the cabin or panel. The siding point remains locked in normal position and the same can be released only when there is no signaled movement over or towards it. Siding points are operated from a ground lever frame situated adjacent to the respective siding point. Ground lever frame can be released only when the concerned E-type key either physically brought from the cabin or transmitted electrically and is inserted in the ground lever frame. When there is no signaled movement over or towards siding 15KL due to signal number 30, 30A, S27 and shunt 10, then siding 15KL control can be released. To release the control siding control button 15KLN and slot transmit button GSBN are pressed and released simultaneously thereby siding root reverse relay 15KL NRR picks up and sticks through its own front contact. Thereby siding key locked proving relay 15KLPR drops and gives an indication of siding key out KLKR. On release of siding control button KLN through the back contacts of KLNR and KLPR and front contact of 15KLNRR, the siding slot relay 15KLYR is energized in the relay room. Thereby siding control relay 15KLCR drops. Then the siding point normal indication relay 15KLNWKR drops. Then through the back contacts of 15KLNWKR, 15KLCR and the front contact of 15KLYR, the siding slot repeater relay 15KLYPR at 15KL location picks up. Thereby through the front contacts of 15KLYPR and 15KLR, a buzzer is activated and through front contact of 15KLYPR, a siding free indication 15KLFK is lit at the location to attract attention of the points man. Then the points man presses the economizer push button and the siding key in lock relay 15KLR drops thereby the buzzer stops and 15KLINK extinguishes. Then the supply is extended to energize EKT lock coil thereby the points man extracts the siding key. Then the points man inserts the siding key in the ground lever frame and reverses the siding point. Then shunting movement is permitted over siding point 15KL. After the completion of the shunt movement over the siding point, the ground lever frame is normalized 
and a key is taken out. Insert it in the EKT which energizes 15 KLR. Then key in indication is lit at the siding location. The pointsman informs the station master that the shunting over siding point is completed and the key is in. The station master acknowledges by pressing and releasing 15 KLN and slot receive button GSRBN simultaneously thereby 15 KLN RR drops which de-energizes 15 KLYR. In turn it drops 15 KLYPR at the location. Through the back contact of 15 KLYPR and front contact of 15 KLR, 15 KLCR is energized and in turn it picks up 15 KL NWKR at the relay room. Thereby, through the front contact of 15 KL NWKR, the siding point normal indication 15 KL NWK is lit. Then 15 KLPR picks up through the front contact of 15 KL NWKR. The siding key in indication KLKG is lit on the panel. At stations where catch and slip sidings are provided, in accordance with the rules for opening of a railway, interlocking arrangements and other safeguards shall be provided as below. Setting of catch siding or slip siding. Interlocking of catch or slip siding points with block instruments. Setting of catch siding or slip siding. The points of slip siding or catch siding shall normally be set and locked for the siding. Interlocking of catch or slip siding points with block instruments. The interlocking shall be such that the key required to set the siding points is released from the instrument in the train going to or train coming from position and once the key is removed from the block instruments, the instrument gets locked in the relevant position. The instrument can be normalized only after the points are set for the slip siding or catch siding and train going to or train coming from key is released from the points and brought back to release the instrument. Where a slip siding is located at the departure end of a double line station, the interlocking shall be such that the points can be set towards the block section only when the block instrument is set to line clear. An audible indication shall be provided at the place of operation of points as an aid to the operating staff, indicating that the train has been received or dispatched and that the point shall now be reset for the catch siding or slip siding. This indication would continue till the points are reset for the catch siding or slip siding. Let us now learn slip siding point operation and 12 or 14 TLSR while receiving a down train. Slip siding operation when receiving a down DN train. When receiving a DN train after giving line clear to station Z and the tokenless block instrument is in train coming from position, the slip siding control key is to be extracted from the SCK1 KT connected with the TBI by pressing the SCK button of the instrument. This key will be inserted in the controlling KT in Station Master's room provided for control of slip siding point number 16 and turned clockwise. Thereafter, the SLSD and GSRBN button on the panel are to be pressed simultaneously thereby SLSD ZNR drops then SLSD NR drops. Through SLSD NR back contact SLSD 
NPR energies which will result in the disappearance of locking indication for slip siding point number 16. Then the desired route is set by pressing the respective route and signal button S6 on the panel which results in dropping of 6 ASR and 12 or 14 TLSR but SLXR remains in pickup condition via TPR's path. After the train passes, the signal S6, that is 7 ATPR, drops which results in dropping of SLXR. Through the back contact of SLXR, the XR gets energized and a bell will start ringing and continues to ring till the point is restored to normal position. When the train passed over the slip siding point number 16, a free indication on the panel for point number 16 appears indicating that the point is free for operation. Though S6 ASR picked up, 12 or 14 TLSR remains in dropped condition. Thereby, 14 WLR and 12 WLR remains in dropped condition. Therefore, point number 12 and 14 are kept in locked condition till 12 or 14 T is cleared and 12 or 14 TLSR is picked up. Then the point number 16 is to be operated to normal position by pressing the individual point button with GBP button simultaneously. Thereby 16 NWKR picks up and the buzzer stops. After setting the point number 16 in the normal position, pressing of SLSB and GSB button simultaneously results in picking up of SLSD ZNR. Thereby SLSD NR picks up and SLSD NPR drops. Thereby locking indication on the panel for point number 16 appears. At the same time free indication for extracting key appears near the KT. Then slip siding control key can now be extracted from the controlling KT for slip siding and is to be inserted in the SCK1 KT connected with the TLBI. The loco pilot of the approaching train at station A end where cat siding is provided shall stop short of the first stop signal, home signal, and sound one long continuous engine whistle to apprise the station master. In addition, the engine crew shall intimate the station master on telephone at the home signal that the train has stopped outside the home signal and awaiting reception. Moreover, when the approaching train has come to stop at the home signal, and after occupation of the particular track circuit, a flashing indication below the home signal at station A end will appear, which will become steady after 120 seconds. On hearing the engine whistle or telephonic conversation or appearance of steady indication, the station master of the station by shall arrange reception of the train in accordance with the procedure as discussed below. When receiving up train after giving line clear to station X and the tokenless block instrument is in train coming from position, the cat siding control key is to be extracted from the SCK2KT connected with the tokenless block instrument by pressing the SCK button of the instrument. This key will be inserted in the controlling KT in Station Master's room 
provided for control of catch siding point number 15 and turned clockwise. Thereafter, the CASD and the GSRB button on the panel is to be pressed simultaneously which will result in the disappearance of locking indication for catch siding point number 15 which will indicate that the desired route can be set by pressing the respective route and signal button on the panel. After passage of train over the catch siding point accompanied with the related signal being put back to on position, a bell will start ringing and continues to ring till the point is restored to normal position. Though 3 ASR picked up, 11 or 13 TRSR remains in dropped condition, thereby 11 WLR and 13 WLR are kept in dropped condition. This will also be accompanied with a free indication on the panel for point number 15 indicating that the point is free for operation. Then the point number 15 is to be operated to normal position by pressing the individual point button with GBT button simultaneously and point is set to normal and buzzer stops. After setting the point number 15 in the normal position, pressing of CASD and GSB button simultaneously will result in appearance of locking indication on the panel for point number 15. At the same time, free indication for extracting CASD key from KT appears near the KT. The cat siding control key can now be extracted from the controlling KT for cat siding and is to be inserted in the SCK2KT connected with the TBI. Track relay TR is normally placed at location box. TPR is placed at relay room. TR and TPR are connected by an underground signaling cable. The two front contacts of track relay are used for double cutting and the back contact of TR is used for cross protection and TPR is picked up in the relay room. The two front contacts of TR are used for double cutting and the back contact of TR is used for cross protection and TPR L is picked up in the point location box. The front contacts of TPRL are used for double cutting and TPRL back contact is used for cross protection and a TPR is picked up in the relay room. The TPRL front contacts are used in the point contactor operation circuit where emergency point operation feature is provided their TPRL is not used in the point zone track circuit as it is not proved in the point contactor circuit at location. In a yard emergency point operation feature is provided. The birthing line is divided into three track circuits as AT, BT and CT. For example, for down mainline birthing, it will be DMAT, DMBT and DMCT. By using ATR front contacts for double cutting and ATR back contact for cross protection, the feed is extended to BTR contacts to prove them in series. Again, by using the BTR contacts for double cutting and cross protection, the feed is extended to CTR contacts to prove them in series. Once again, 
CTR contacts are used for double cutting and cross protection and the feed is extended to TPR in the relay room and the TPR is picked up. In a nutshell, we can say that all the contacts of AT, BT and CT are proved in series to pick up TPR in the relay room.